Now the first point as part of the church as a family is one body in unity. I want you to understand God compares the human body to church. Absolutely, he compares. If you want, you can do your expository research, 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, 1 Peter 4. You would exactly understand what the church is. But I will give the gist of it, and you will see that in the subsequent weeks, that what is a human body? We have mouth. It is supposed to talk. We have hands to eat. We have legs to walk. We have nose to smell. We have eyes to see. All these are parts of the human body. This is not my interpretation. You will see literal as it is interpretation in Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12, what I'm going to speak right now. on The way you accumulate all these and form one body, when all these mouth, hand, legs, nose, and everything, when they join together, they form one body. Can they be separated and function? If this hand is, is taken away, can this hand function separately? If my mouth is taken away from my head, can it, can it speak? No. All these need one another to form one body which cannot be separated. Now, similarly, church means everyone is gifted with some spiritual gift to you. It may be preaching. It may be prophecy. It may be tongues. It may be administration. It may be worship, the way brother has worship. Praise God for the gift what God has given to him. So, when all these gifts are united together, it is called as one body in unity. If you see in Romans 12, 4, for just as each of us has one body with many members, did you see this in the context of human body it is written? And these members do all, do not all have the same function. So we just saw the hand cannot do the things what a mouth does, and a mouth cannot do what the hand does. Similarly, in the context of the church, everyone is gifted. Let's take an example. My gift is preaching and evangelism. But if you want me to sing, maybe you all will run away. But the brother, when he has sing, you all had a joy in it, the way he was worshiping God. So all the gifts, what God has given you, when he has given a salvation to you, God's spirit is inculcated into you. If the moment you are born again, God's regeneration seed, the Holy Spirit is seed is put in your heart. So as part of that Holy Spirit seed, you will be blessed with at least one gift. So you as an individual person, you need to ask God, what is your gift? Whether it is prayer, whether it is encouragement, whether it is evangelism, whether it is teaching, whether it is preaching, whatever is the gift, you need to come and talk to your elder if you do not know what is your gift. Elder is nothing but pastor. And then you need to see how you use your gift to encourage one another in the church. Okay? You see 1 Peter 4.10. Each of you should use all these things are written in the context of the church. Okay? Each of you, it is only some, only pastor? Is it only Jones brother? Or is it only Jimmy brother? No, each of you, each of you in the church, okay? Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. If I come and sit silently, just clapping and hearing and leaving, am I serving others? Peter is very clearly writing, you ought to serve one another with the gift what you have, which God has given to you. The way the human body has many parts and each part helps the other part and it is called as one human body. Similarly, when you call yourself as a church, everyone is gifted with the spiritual gifts. You are supposed to use that gift to serve others. 
1 Corinthians 12:27 Now you are the body of Christ and each of you is a part of it We are all the body of Christ to which Jesus Christ is the head Ephesians 1:22 23 God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be a head over everything for the church which is his body So church is the body of Lord Jesus Christ you Christ is the head and the body is the church so here also you see in acts 94 one more example he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him saul saul why did you persecute me you may question me brother the picture is correct give me scriptures you need to ask like that i have given ephesians 1:22 23 and also i'm showing you acts 94 when Jesus encountered Saul and when the Saul heard the voice of Jesus Christ this is what he said he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him Saul Saul why do you persecute me means Jesus is telling when Saul was persecuting the people in the first century Jesus is saying why are you persecuting me you may think i am persecuting people why is Jesus telling that Saul is persecuting me I am not persecuting Jesus but I am persecuting people you may think like that but because we are the body of Christ because the church is the body of Christ it is Jesus himself is telling that Saul you are persecuting me when Saul was persecuting the people with someone do you need many people or you go alone to fight with someone does a king go to Ephesians 4 4 to 6 you need to understand what is one body the church also is one body there cannot be discrimination there cannot be separation today i say my gift is preaching today i come to celebration church today i go to a different church no can this hand go out of my body and go to this brother and function as part of eating into his mouth tomorrow can this hand go like that no it cannot this hand is supposed to function in my body as part of the local church you are supposed to be committed to only one local church whatever gift you may be having you are supposed to build and serve one another in your local church you cannot go to different different churches different different sundays that is not biblical it is not me who is telling you can clearly understand with the example of human body itself can the mouth go from my mouth and to some other person's mouth tomorrow comparison if you go and see romans 12 and first corinthians 12 comparison of human body to the church okay ephesians 4 verse 4 to 6 there is one body one spirit just as you are called to the one hope that belongs to you that belongs to your call one lord one faith one baptism one god and father of all who is over all and through all and in all so you see seven or eight things there when you call yourself as church you are supposed to have unity this entire church is one single unit there cannot be divisions there cannot be difference in terms of the doctrinal positions also so church is united with one body okay one spirit one hope one lord one faith one baptism and one god father of all you cannot have different faith other than the lord jesus christ you are baptized in the name of father son and holy spirit once you are repented you are supposed to be united you are supposed to be in one body using your gifts you are supposed to have one hope that i will also raise again like how christ ra- was raised at the day of the lord's second coming you are supposed to have faith in only the atoning sacrifice of the lord jesus christ <laughs>